Welcome to Perspectives El Paso. I'm Leon Blevins of El Paso Community College Television. We are at the Administrative Services Building at Community College right now. And in May of this year, 2016, we're right now at September the 7th, 2016. Well, last May I was walking into the entrance of this building, coming to this television studio, and I saw several people wearing blue shirts and their sign said on the front of their shirts, Hobie, H-O-B-Y. I'm an inquisitive kind of guy. <laughs> so I walked over to them and I asked this gentleman I have today, Daniel Hernandez, and his wife, Veronica, <coughs> tell me what is Hobie? And so they talked about it being a nonprofit organization for youth leadership. And I said, well, I need to have you on my television show then. And they were surprised I have a television show. And I said, I love these kinds of programs where we can talk about what we can do for young people here in El Paso particularly. So I have today Daniel and Veronica Hernandez. Hello, Dr. Welcome Williams. for coming. Did thank I get it right, Veronica? Yes, thank you for having us. That's okay, great. Okay, good. Uh, so we need to start with <coughs> this organization, its name, where that comes from, what is your mission statement. We'll find out this, and then we'll find a little bit about you and how you got involved with this organization. So who wants to start it? Mission I'll, statement. I'll start, and it's uh, our mission statement. Well, thank you, first of all, for having us here. We appreciate this You're greatly. Mm -hmm. um, our mission statement is to uh, develop our youth of tomorrow's uh, future and, and, and get them to understand, to help the community, you know, to, to you know, for, for the people who need help, get them to, to help people volunteer. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, I think that's a big key is having them volunteer with the community and getting their feet wet so they can know what it is to, to be tomorrow's leader. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to give a little comment here. I have a bad sinus infection of all things to come along just before a television view. So I may need to get a sip of water from time to time. Notice my cup, it says, fearless leader. <laughs> isn't, uh, Veronica, isn't that what you're trying to teach these young people to be as leaders? Yes, that, that is part of our, a major part of our program. Um, ambassadors from across the far west Texas area, we invite them, sophomore students, to come to our program to teach them uh, self-leadership, group leadership, and community leadership. Okay. And so uh, for a whole weekend, uh, it's really two and, a, two and a half days, almost three days, we take them through a program that helps them think about their future and what are they gonna do with that future and okay. how they can uh, hugely impact their future. Uh, about the time that I met you, I did a television interview with a young man named John and an associate of his named Alexis. And they'd seen me on television and asked if they could be on the program. They wanted to talk about youth leadership. And I said, what's your organization? They said, it's about success and leadership at UT El Paso. And so I had them on and they invited me back to be their keynote speaker for their initiation of new members. Yesterday I go to get my prescription for my sinus infection Young man looks across the counter there, he's in his white smock, and he says, oh, do you remember me? I <laughs> said, I'm supposed to remember you. He said, yes, I'm with the Success and Leadership Program at UTEF. You came and spoke to us, and I'm Jesus. So I can't remember all the last names, <coughs> but this is what it's about, meeting people, connecting with other people, networking with other people and other groups. Now tell me what HOBY stands for, H-O-B-Y. HOBY stands for Hugh O'Brien. That's, that's the actor that uh, well, portrayed Wyatt Earp back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, I mean, he's uh, past my age. I'm, I'm younger than You're a kid. You're a young <laughs> kid. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. But uh, he's, well, he's a founder of uh, HOBI. It uh, stands for Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership. Okay. And, and this is a worldwide organization that we have uh, that, he, that he founded in 58, 1958. And uh, I believe we've been, uh, he, this organization has been uh, present for 58 years itself. We're starting our 58th year. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, I'm, I'll be 79 next month in October, okay? Mm -hmm. And I remember Wyatt Earp. Hugh O'Brien played the part of Wyatt Earp for several years on television, back when TV was black and white, if I remember. <laughs> and uh, I didn't watch a lot of television. I was hyperactive, needed to get out and so on. <coughs> when I got married, my parents-in-law, they watched a lot of Old West television. And so I saw a lot of those kind of things if I lived at their house. 
And I, don't know, I do remember seeing Hugh O'Brien in some movies. I was always intrigued with the fact he was so handsome. Very handsome. And he was always surrounded by beautiful women. Yeah. Now that will catch the eye of a young teenager, <laughs> pre-twenties, certain uh, kind of male, and became fascinated with him. After I met you and you told me it was named after him, I went to Google. Mother Google knows everything. Yes. Yes. And so anybody in the audience, you can Google Hugh O'Brien and you can read about him, a fascinating history. Yes. And he um, was an actor, but he later in years he took small bit parts in some ways, but he never gave up being busy and active. This is true. I Very also true. read that he <coughs> at one point was invited by a friend to go to Africa with him and meet Albert Schweitzer, the famous medical doctor working with very poor people, including lepers. Yes. Fascinating history. And when he was asked the question, this is in, on Google, now what are you going to do with the rest of your life? As he was kind of getting away with the big parts on television and so on. And he said, well, I'll have to think about it a little bit. And he decided with the rest of his life he would serve other people. That's what Hobie's about, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it's Very about true. servicing. And that's what Hugh decided to do. And without Hugh, we wouldn't have Hobie today. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, he just passed. Just two days ago. Just two days ago. Correct. He's going to be greatly missed. Mm -hmm. if, if you uh, go on Twitter, you'll see uh, many, many ex-alumni ambassadors from Hobie saying um, hashtag uh, because of Hugh. Mm -hmm. And then they fill in, because of Hugh, what have they done? And so they have uh, been tweeting for two days right. now all the things that have occurred because of Hugh O'Brien. Now you talk about training, seminars. You have seminars. Correct. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an annual seminar here in El Paso. Yes. Yes, there are there are one day and then all the way to a whole week seminar. Mm -hmm. What uh, we host here in the El Paso area, we have a, a one day seminar called uh, Community Leadership Workshop, mm -hmm. shop, and that's for our freshmen students in high school and they are invited to come that is no charge to them they come to a one day and we do leadership activities with them there our major uh, leadership seminar is the two and a half day that one we host here and uh, with Dr. Serrata's blessing hopefully we'll continue to have it here at EPCC uh, that one will take place May 19th 20th and 21st 2017 mm -hmm. And that's where we invite our sophomore students to experience uh, the Hobie experience. And then from here, we send um, two, two uh, one boy and one girl, to World Leadership Congress. To and represent. World Leadership Congress is a week-long opportunity. And they represent our Far West. And all the other Hobies send their students as well. And so there's about 400, 500 students a week long. And last year's ones in Chicago, and they have the opportunity to experience even more uh, opportunities of leadership and learning and as uh, for service learning uh, with the Hobie World Congress. And also for our juniors, we have an opportunity. It's called Advanced Leadership Workshop, and that's a. a kind of a, uh, a workshop that spreads out through a semester and the students uh, work on projects together to uh, serve their community. Now when you had your workshops here, where did you get your leaders to train these people that came in? Where do you get your leaders? Okay, well, this is actually, uh, I'm glad you asked that question. This is a world-class seminar that we really hold locally in El Paso. Mm -hmm. the, we follow the, some strict guidelines that uh, Los Angeles puts out for Hobie across the nation and across the world. So we have, we have one leader, who is, he's called an LSE, and uh, he's in charge of the seminar committee. Mm -hmm. And he, he trains, and he, he is in charge of the, of the groups or the leaders that are gonna take care of the, or handle the kids. So that he trains those, uh, those leaders when, they, when they're ready to come in for the seminar everybody's trained so each, each leader each senior facilitator is what we call them they have a junior facil uh, facilitator so they have it's two people per per group of eight and uh, and then they're all following the same guideline so and it, they're uh, Hobie alumni yes. we're an all volunteer so they've group through this mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. well, do, they, do they rotate in breakout sessions or something so everybody gets the same kind of information oh yes, yes um, we have guest speakers come in uh, then we have reflection time, and then they work in groups on that reflection time. 
and throughout the whole weekend there are opportunities uh, to hear our community speaker. Uh, we've had people like uh, Veronica Escobar, uh, our ex-city uh, manager, Joyce Wilson, mm -hmm. different Rodriguez. community leaders come in and speak to our students. We've had the Federal Reserve, uh, uh, Ruben uh, Gonzalo, Ahedo. Gon Ahedo Ahedo. come in and mm -hmm. speak to our kids about um, finances. finances and how to get what they want in life oh, that's cool. takes work. <laughs> okay, now we, we're we going to break this program into two segments today. Okay. Uh, this segment with the two of you, and then we're going to stop there, pause, and then we're going to bring in one of your ambassadors so he can share and his And he can experience. tell his okay, perspective. Do that. Now we want you to get the word out. Do you have a telephone number or website or something you want us to put on the screen at this point? We do. You got it? <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, well, the first one is if you ever want to volunteer, if you want to volunteer for Hobie, you go to hobie.org and you you uh, press the button to uh, volunteer. You go to the volunteer okay. part and you can click in there and you can go and they'll guide you and fill in all your information and that information will be sent out to directly to me that okay, that okay. information that I agree if if uh, you meet the criteria to be a volunteer for Hobie. If you would like to send us any mail or any donations because it is a nonprofit we take in kind we right. take our students um, it is hundred and ninety five dollars to attend the first student from every campus and then any additional students after that is three hundred and fifty to attend and that's just to defray the cost of housing and feeding and providing the program to okay. the students so you get the word out through the schools yes we definitely okay do. what's your P.O. box P.O. box nine seven one five nine four El Paso Texas seven nine 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 seven one five nine four okay we'll put that up on the screen for thank you thank you well, i can't remember a lot of things yes. sometimes i have trouble remembering my own cell phone number <laughs> <laughs> too many numbers to remember. I, know, I know and that's our biggest fight that we have is is uh, or our challenge not a fight it's our challenge is getting to to the counselors in schools because schools constantly change counselors oh, yeah. so we have one contact with one counselor and the following year you have a totally different counselor that's not not aware of hobie don't has no idea what Hobie is about. And everybody wants everybody else's attention, okay? That's right. Well, I think our time is about gone here. And thanks for coming on, Veronica and Daniel. Thank you. Thank and you we're going to talk to one of your ambassadors. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Before I started singing, I was such a complete and utter failure at everything. And I think that music kind of saved my life. Sometimes you just kind of feel like the Rodney Dangerfield of, you know, music. You know, that's the way, okay, I get no respect, you know. But I love doing this and I feel really good just looking at those things and go, okay, I did that. I'm a professional, I can do this. You know, kind of gives you, gives you self-respect as opposed to looking for it from other people. I'm, looking forward to writing a great song for a film and getting an EGOT. That's what I would like to do. Welcome back to the final part of today's Perspectives El Peso. I've been speaking with Daniel and Veronica Hernandez. And Veronica stepped away so that we can bring someone in with this program called Hobie and his name is Santiago Marich. Santiago, welcome to the program. Hi, thanks for having me, appreciate and, it. And you are uh, an alumni of this organization. Uh, you've been through several stages of the process of training with Hobie, and they've been telling us about that. Tell us about your experience. Where have you been going to high school? How did you find out about Hobie? And how did you plug into the Hobie program? All right, well, first of all, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Uh, second of all, it all I go to Clint High School. It all started one day when I walked into the counselor's office and uh, my counselor approached me and she asked if I was interested in doing, some, doing an event during the weekend. And I said, of course I am. What is it? And she said, well, it's Hobie. And I, I asked what that is. And, it, and she said it was a Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership and that apparently I'd be going for a seminar during a weekend in May. Mm -hmm. And I'd be, you know, just learning how I can better myself and work with others around me. So... You know, I definitely was interested in that. I signed up, and a couple months later, there I was. What's the number one memory of being involved in a seminar? Number one. 
number one memory, we, we, we had to do this project as a group where we had to kind of make up this invention. Our, our invention was glasses that took you kind of, kind of like a, it took you anywhere that you wanted to go, like a transporter or mm. whatever. Oh, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> and we had to make a commercial about it. Uh, my specific part was where, you know, uh, one of our colleagues, her name was Natasha, she said that she wanted to go visit her grandma, so the glasses took her to the border. So I ended up coming out with a little cart, and I started yelling, Ilote, Ilote, okay. yeah, <laughs> to signify the border. So part of this involves creativity. Oh, yes. You're, yes, uh, you're sir. being creative. Uh, when I was teaching at Texas Western College in 1966, uh, that's the year that the, the Miners won the National Basketball Championship, and a young man asked me the question, Mr. I was talking about the presidency, and he asked me the question, how do you define leadership? I said, I define leadership as designating a direction you want someone to go and then doing things to motivate them to go that direction. And of course, that involves communication and involves not just one-way communication, but two-way communication, you understanding feedback so you can be better at leading someone. How do you find that? Are you a leader in Clint High School? I'd like to think I am a leader at Clint High School. I, I put others before myself, or at least I think I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm always looking for the good, of the, the good of the group, the good of each individual that's there, and you know, we're looking for a successful outcome of whatever we're assigned to do. What do you think are most important aspects of leadership? Selflessness, uh, courage, and most importantly, intelligence. Mm -hmm. Not just you know, book smart, but also instinct, kind mm -hmm. of uh, something that not everybody has, or that not every, everybody has, has found yet, mm -hmm. exposed. Well, that's good. And of course, you have seen role models of leadership. Yes, sir. You want to name some of the people that inspired you to be what you are, besides your parents, maybe even? All right. Well, some of the people. Malcolm X is definitely somebody that I look up to. Mm -hmm. uh, I also look up to, I want to say, oh, uh, our, our military. I look up to, there's a good number of people out there that I look mm -hmm. up to. So you admire people that go into the military and are willing to serve the nation? Anybody with, you know, mm -hmm. who's looking out for others, mm -hmm. okay. really. Okay. Well, how, do you, how, do you help, how do you help people find this? Well, we, we try to inspire them by bringing in community leaders that are already leaders in this community, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, we try to get the mayor, we'll try to get, uh, we got the, the commissioner, um, uh, Jose, we got Jose Rodriguez, which is now a, a state senator. Right. Uh, we brought in uh, Veronica Escobar to speak to these young kids, and and pretty much what we do is have them give them a talk on how <coughs> how they got to that position that they are now, and it's, it's not by it's not given to them. It's right. by hard work that they they do, and in return they, they pay back to the community what what uh, what, what they are. I've interviewed Rodriguez and Escobar. And they both talked about people that inspired them to get into public service and politics. They knew they probably could have made more money in other fields, maybe. Yes. But they were willing to sacrifice in order to serve the public. And I, and I think that's more rewarding, helping others than, than helping yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that it's, it's you know if you get a hundred people to move up in life, it's, it's it's more rewarding than moving yourself up in life mm -hmm. by making the millions of dollars that they could probably could have made. Okay. Mohammed, do you have plans to go on to some college or university? Uh, yes, sir. Lately, I've been look I recently w visited Stanford, San Jose State, mm -hmm. and I've, I've gotten a couple letters from Baylor and St. Mary's here in Texas. And you have a particular interest? Have you thought about a major? Well, yeah, actually. Uh, civil engineering is something I'm definitely looking into, but eventually I also i am thinking about starting a business, so definitely maybe financing mm -hmm. and uh, marketing something I'm interested in. I interviewed a woman on this program named Mary Gonzalez from Clint. Big family and she ran for and got elected to the Texas legislature. She's your representative for your district. And we talked also about leadership and people that inspire you and cause you to become interested in public service. So congratulations. I'm glad that you're going this direction and wish you well in your future educational aspirations. I appreciate it, yeah. sir. Most of our, I want to say, we don't have a we don't have a true uh, mark on on our, our, our alumni that go through Hobie, but I want to say that 90 percent of our our kids that go through our seminars go on to college, and uh, I think that's a big reward for us. I would think that would be true. Anyone that would be willing to meet with a counselor, such as in Clint, 
and say, yeah, I'll go to that seminar. I want to do something this weekend. And you find out it was more than you thought it was going to be, right? Definitely. <laughs> I gave up a music festival to go, and it was definitely worth it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. That's a sacrifice. It definitely was. Oh, good. I was also going to mention that we've, uh, Hobie has had over a half, a, or a half a million ambassadors go through our seminars. And uh, every year, 10,000 uh, ambassadors go through uh, as sophomores through, throughout the world. 10,000? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, now, did you ever go to any conferences where Hugh O'Brien was actually there? No, we almost had him come into El Paso, but uh, we had to <coughs> fundraise a little bit more for him, and we couldn't afford to have him come in. Mm -hmm. But we could have uh, brought him in. Mm -hmm. And he's also up in age, so it would be an extra care for him. We didn't want to risk anything right. on him getting hurt, or oh, we, sure, sure, we had sure. access to him. Well, even though in his later, later years he did not uh, have a major acting parts on, on the film or in television, uh, but he kept active. I just retired from teaching after 53 years, uh, 44 here at the community college, and I've been asked a lot this past week uh, about now what are you going to do? <laughs> and I said, well, I'm finding a lot to do as a volunteer. I was volunteering before I retired from teaching, and I'm still going to be a volunteer. And I, didn't, I did not retire from life. I retired from classroom teaching, but yes. I did not retire from life. And that's going to be true for whatever we do, that we should always be lifelong learners, and contributing to our community to make our communities better. And that's what it's about. I agree. What has been your profession? My profession, I'm an electrical contractor here in the city of El Paso. Okay. And um, I mean, it's so true about having, a, you gotta have a, a plan, your exit plan, mm -hmm. of when, you, when you're gonna stop doing <laughs> this, what are you gonna do next? And that's what I'm right now, I'm, I'm at that stage of my life where I'm gonna, I'm already making my, my plan for okay. my retirement. I recently got a telephone call from a woman with AARP, American Association of Retired Persons, and she's writing an article <coughs> for her magazine. I don't know if I'll be quoting it, but she asked me, it was her question, she'd heard about me. Now what, what plans did you make to retire? I said, well, I think number one, my plan was to get a good education for the age in which I could use that education to make a living. Get an education. Yes. Because I know too many that dropped out and then they just had to work by the seat of their pants. They didn't have a plan. My plan was even I worked while going to school to get an education that was worthwhile in the time in which I live. The other was put some money back. Don't spend every money, every, every bit of money you get every month. Save some, put some back. And that's the way that it worked. When I got a credit card, my wife and I decided we would pay it off every month. We've never paid interest on a credit card. We paid the annual fee, like $65 or something, but decided to pay it all off and live within our means. And so when I retired, I had a pretty good retirement plan. The retirement plan I built up, we never went into it for a trip to Europe, for putting our kids through college. Those that went, they worked also, and things of that nature. You have to have a plan with what you're going to do with yes. the rest of your life. And a big plan is putting back, of course, giving back to your community. That's mm -hmm. one of the biggest plans you can ever have. Right especially if you're well off where you don't have to, you know, sacrifice or do more work to, you know, maintain yourself or support your life, your, your uh, what is it, um, can't think of it, but I mean, you just want to have enough to get to get by oh, yeah. comfortably. That's all. We, we all want a, at least a middle class lifestyle. Correct. Now, some of us want to live at the luxury level, <laughs> but we weren't, weren't born into that no, level. No, no, we're not. <laughs> what kind of work were your parents in? Uh, let's see, right now my dad's a truck driver in Hobbs, and my mom has isn't working right now, but she should be working in a, you know, like a pediatrician's pretty soon. Mm -hmm. I have a son that he's now a long haul truck driver. Oh wow. And he had several jobs, a variety of jobs and landscaping and things like that. Had his own little company in 2008, the economy collapsed. His name is Michael Keith. And he said, I have a friend that he's a long haul truck driver. He wants me to be his partner. But I, I need some, I, I, I think I'll have to work a while to make money to go to truck driving school. I said, Keith, if that's what you want to do, I will pay for your school to go get your truck driving licenses and training and get out there and he loves it. He loves doing it, traveling around and he makes good money, got another partner, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to find your niche and what you like to do and try to make a living, pay the bills, have some insurance or whatever it is. Correct. And so Hobie is one of those kind of organizations that teaches you how to think, isn't that right? Yes, sir. And think creatively, to plan, I teach, and then some, I do seminars and things of like this, organizing life, 
and I teach people that you need to have a strategic plan for things you're going to do and then work out the technical things that you need to do to achieve those things. When I first started with Hobie, actually my Veronica started with Hobie volunteering and she kind of pulled me in with a hook. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we were blessed to have our kids go through the program as ambassadors and other alumni. Well, my, my daughter is now working for the Chamisa National Park. She's a park ranger and, and she, she went on to UTEP and, and, and got her bachelor's. My son went on to uh, North Texas and he just graduated with his electrical engineering degree in, uh, in Dallas, in North Texas. Mm -hmm. And now he's, he just started working, as a matter of fact, last week. So I'm very proud of that. And then I know that Hobie was a big part of that, you know, in, in teaching him how to step forward and, and be, being a true leader. Okay, now Mohammed is one of your success stories. Do you have any other success stories you'd like to share with us? Some that you thought, they came in and said, I can't do this, I'm too shy. You know, they, they all come in this way. All Hobie ambassadors come in on the first day on a Friday their parents are pretty much pushing them into the seminar. Mm -hmm. Come uh, Sunday afternoon, after the luncheon, nobody wants to leave. The, all these kids have bonded. They, they've, they've seen what, what they can do as, as a team or united, mm -hmm. right? Definitely, I can attest to that. And, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, they, they see the big difference and the impact that they made, uh, that Hobie made on them, that they're ready to go out to be uh, community leaders of tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? Definitely, for sure. Have you drawn some of your fellow classmates into Hobie? Actually, yeah. Uh, a lot of the underclassmen that I know that I know that are going to be offered this year, mm -hmm. I've been telling a lot about it. How they, it's almost a, it's almost like a spiritual ex experience, you know, the way that it, it uplifts you. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like an empowerment, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, for sure, recommending it to all of them. Do you have any younger brothers or sisters? Yes, sir. Now, this involves male and female. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. We don't discriminate. So you have some brothers and sisters that are looking up to you for your leadership skills. Yeah, a little sister right now who just started the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. So she'll, I hope that she enters the program eventually. Well, that's good. Well, I'm glad that, I'm glad that I passed you in the hallway out here I'm back glad in May. I, we appreciate Definitely. this greatly. And I mean, anybody's uh, interested in, in uh, being part of Hobie, just uh, they can email us, go, go to uh, hobie.org. And uh, you know, send send us uh, any messages that we need to uh, to do, or uh, I'm sure you can email. Um, yeah. uh, well, you, you know, I can give you my uh, my email address, and it's uh, thbt0404 at yahoo.com. Yeah, and you gave us post office box while we yes. were doing all that. Well, it's good to have you with us, Mohammed. I good to have you, Mr. Blevins. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate thanks for coming, and thanks for watching another program, Perspectives El Paso. I'm Leon Blevins.